persons are starting dialysis with Interx and Caicos at an alarming rate. We have very high numbers of persons for the size of the population starting dialysis each year, and these persons are young persons. The reasons we have so much kidney disease within the Turks and Caicos Islands is because we have high rates of obesity, diabetes, particularly type 2 diabetes and hypertension. And these conditions are occurring in young persons as well. We're seeing persons in their 30s being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and hypertension. We're seeing obesity in very young people, even children. So we have more obese children and adolescents, which then translates into adults, young adults who are obese and who are at risk of developing type 2 diabetes and hypertension at a young age. We cannot survive without kidneys. We can, however, survive with one kidney. Persons have been born with one kidney. Persons have had a kidney removed for one reason or the other and a person can maintain a normal quality of life and a normal length of life with one kidney. When it comes to hemodialysis, the current rec standard recommendation is 12 hours per week. This is usually divided up into four hours, three days weekly. And so if you consider this, this is an, quite a number of hours of dialysis and in the year 2017, we performed 4,700 treatment sessions of dialysis within this country. A patient can have complications related to their dialysis access. They can have infections. They can have develop heart disease. We know that dialysis patients are at greater risk of heart disease than persons who do not have kidney failure they also had greater risk of cerebrovascular disease. And in terms of the lifespan, traditionally the lifespan on dialysis has been poor. However, with advances in dialysis treatment and treatment of cardiac disease, persons are living longer and longer on dialysis. In early chronic kidney disease, there are usually no symptoms. So a person can have significant impairment in their kidney function and not know it. So they will really need to check for it. So who should check for kidney disease? If you are at risk of having chronic kidney disease, then you need to have your blood test monitored. Persons who are at risk of chronic kidney disease include persons who have diabetes, persons with high blood pressure or hypertension, persons with heart disease, okay? persons who may have a family history of kidney disease, or persons who have had kidney infections. So these are some of the persons who are at risk of kidney disease. And so once you are at risk, you do need to be monitored for the development of kidney disease so that it can be detected in an early stage. We know that our grandparents ate a lot more of the ground provisions they grew what they ate. They were very active, so they, were, they did a lot of manual work. And because transportation was not readily available, they walked where, everywhere they went. So their lifestyles were by default very active and their diets healthier. As the years progressed and we became, I suppose, more prosperous, um, we started to adopt certain eating habits of other countries. We've increased the amount of red meat and processed foods in our diet. We've increased the amount of packaged foods in our diets, the amount of calories in general. Also, as we've developed, we've also, we also have more motor vehicles. And so most persons now tend to drive or ride wherever they need to go and therefore our lifestyles by default are no longer active and so if we are going to maintain normal activity levels we do need to make the extra effort finding that time during the week to walk cycle jog or swim but we do need to maintain 
physical activity. Current CDC recommendations are that we maintain at least 150 minutes of cardiovascular activity per week and that can be divided up based on your schedule. And we know that cardiovascular activity is associated with lower risk of cardiovascular disease, lower risk of obesity and a longer life.